Herzlich willkommen zum 38. Internationalen Dokumentarfilmfestival hier in München. Also a warm welcome to all our viewers and listeners out there in the digital space. Um, and also, also a very warm welcome to Jean-Marie Tenot, who you can see on the screen here now. You are at, in Casablanca at the airport. Welcome in Munich in the <laughs> Silver Saal Doc Studio. Uh, thank you, and uh, it was, it's my pleasure. It's a very unusual way to place to be doing a Q&A, but uh, <laughs> you can still do it, and that's great. So. So there's a very good connection and we are happy. We can hear you, we can see you, so all is perfect. Yeah, so there are about um, 50 people here in the room and we watched all your film. Thank you for um, yeah, allowing us to screen it again at DocFest. Um, you have been a guest of DocFest 10, no, 11 years ago or more, I think. And um, yeah, we just talked about it. It was last year your 30th um, anniversary of Africa, I will fleece you. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's, it's a very insightful film, a very challenging film. So maybe in the beginning you can tell us um, how did you start this kind of filmmaking? I mean, you, you, you have this I narration this this personal voice over through all your films. So this is a very unique Shomari Teno way of, of making documentary. So how did you come up with this idea or that did it just came to you? Uh, well, it, it took me almost uh, seven years to be able to say I. Because actually when I made my first short film, Homage, uh, I was trying to bring something particular to cinema. I wanted to talk about things around me, but I just, just didn't want to use the same method like the voice of God that was existing in many documentaries and the newsreel, where you had someone who will be speaking and no one knows who the person is, where the person is speaking from. So my first short film, Homage, I said to myself, I'm going to create a kind of fictional conversation between Uh, two friends, and they'll be talking about everyday life, and their two points of views are going to be conflicting. But it was a conversation that lasted 13 minutes. But at the end, you realize that the two people are just the same in the piece, the same part of the same one, actually. It was my split personality, the one that who left and who went to, to Europe, and, and the one who stayed home, and And it was an autobiographical film that I didn't really know how to approach because I didn't have models at that time. And for Afrique the Primera, it was a conscious and very deliberate thing that I decided to, to have the people look into the camera to speak first person. But I was not the one behind the camera because at that time we were shooting 16 millimeter and I needed a, a cinematographer who could walk with the camera on the shoulder for a long distance. But all the narration, everything was planned from the beginning because I really wanted people to see things from the perspective of an African filmmaker, an African person, and see what we are going through. And also, I want, it was playful. Cinema for me was being playful and being, enjoying myself. But how do you, can you be playful with such heavy and important subjects? Yeah. I tried. Right. Yeah, and on top of that, I think humor is also very important for you, and mm -hmm. um, you you mix and you bring your humor and also sarcastic humor into the game. And um, why is it so important for you? Well, when the situation is really so harsh and so difficult and seems almost. Uh, inexplicable, the only thing that you can do is laugh about it. Otherwise, well, what else can you do? Especially when the coloniality has mixed all the things so much that whenever you pull a string, you see, realize how deep and how it is. So how do you go about that if not through humor and through laughter and taking a certain distance to be as critical as possible, hoping that people will continue to 
to question and to challenge. That's why humor is important. Mm. Not to be lecturing to people, but to be having, giving a kind of mix between entertainment and, and well, not education, but entertainment and bringing, raising the right questions. Yeah, having it more lightly, but being still political and being decisive and yeah. Um, I think I read somewhere that you set out actually to to do kind of a different film. Is that true? You, you wanted to do a film about literature and, and culture in, in Cameroon and then yeah. um, politics came into the game and, and the protest took place. So that changed the whole project kind of. Yes, because when I start the project, I don't have a fixed line. Things that come, that happen, are just nourishing the project. So when I started, it was the moment in uh, 89, when there are protests everywhere, the change in the big uh, map of the geopolitical world, mm -hmm. the, the fall of the Berlin Wall, and all these declarations, all these discourses. And in Cameroon, they started what they called the Dead City. And Dead City was a kind of protest. And people were protesting because they wanted a national conference to organize their lives so that the life can be, life can be better. Mm -hmm. But the only answer they were met with was violence. So facing this violence, I started asking myself questions. Why is it only by violence the only way to deal with issues uh, when it comes to Africa? And so I went back in history and I realized that this violence has always been there. Mm. And, and actually that became the spread of, of the whole story. Uh, if you have only, you can only be met with violence, it's just because people don't want anything to change. So we just need to be there sitting, suffering and clapping to those who are living better and accompanying them. So I started trying to see how to subvert this kind of uh, paradigm that we were, that was forced on us. Mm. So now your film has also became history. And um, okay. what maybe you can tell us, what changed in that 30 years? Is there a situation did it get better? Did people become aware of their history? Did they um, approach to um, change something or is it still the same? Uh, I'm afraid things have even gotten worse, especially in Cameroon. And uh, when, when people are just not wanting to challenge an unjust system, thinking that it might change. Maybe some individual lives are going to change, but for the vast majority of people, things are getting really bad and terrible. And actually, yesterday or two days ago, there was a big, big, a huge storm in Yaoundé. And uh, we made, I was part of a workshop called Impala, where we're training young filmmakers. And one of the subjects were the situation of the people who are the migrants from a neighboring country. And they were living in terrible conditions in Yaoundé and in many uh, towns in the way. And because of this rain, in some neighborhoods, you know, people cannot attract in their houses because the water is everywhere and they cannot even come out of the houses. And in that house that was almost non-existent, there was a, a short circuit and a woman who was in her 60 or 70 was living there with her granddaughter, only with her granddaughter, living under the conditions that was really incredibly bad. They just perished in the, in the, in the fire because they couldn't get out, they couldn't leave, they could drown if they went out because the whole place was full of water. And so it's such a terrible situation, such a shocking situation to mm. have that happening today in Yaoundé. And we had we have this short film where you see this grandmother and her granddaughter living there under 
incredible circumstances. Mm. And so this is still happening today. So for making uh, a fiction of I made a film on the situation of water in Cameroon. I mean, the, the situation was bad at that time, but now it's even terrible. In many even places. worse. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So things are not getting better, and things will only start getting better when we're going to associate freedom, uh, liberty, democracy, and people having the capacity to express themselves without being uh, sent to jail or without being uh, brutalized. Things are only going to start changing really at that moment and when people are going to elect people who represent, to represent them and not have these rigged elections and people yeah. who really don't, don't care about them. Absolutely, yeah. So, maybe are there already some questions in the audience? Let's see if there are some... Um, someone wants to ask something? Not yet. So I'll just continue. Well, there's a question. Kannst beides, also wie du magst. Hier ist ein, warte, ganz kurz. We have a mic there. Ich kann auch übersetzen. Hello? Ja. Hello. 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 Um, how's the actual situation with movies and uh, yeah, um, newspapers um, from African or um, Cameroon uh, people or is it uh, influenced by the uh, US movies or US series like in Germany or in South Africa? Yes, the influence of uh, series is present almost everywhere in the continent and uh, mostly I think people are influenced by the Brazilian, many telenovelas, many they are so they are trying to reproduce them. Some people are attempting to do some action kind of movies, uh, but the quality is well it's okay they're trying their best and they, there is this uh, desire to make the kind of films that Would, that they consider to be for the international market who are really a kind of copy of what you see almost everywhere. And I hope that the copies that they're trying to make are going to be to meet the standards of others because others, the kind of means that they have to make these films, they very really never have this kind of means home to make the films. So it's... Um, uh, Well, people always are dreaming of having a cinema that has some wood or some Hollywood or some Nollywood or some wood in it, but I believe that the future is, is going to be when we develop our own uh, kind of narratives, telling the stories, not trying to emulate other people, but really telling the stories that matter to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I think we... Um We had a panel here a few days ago um, together with filmmakers from the continent with um, Suriel Rengu, with Mohamed Umar and Mandisa Sita also from Cape Town and we was, they were saying actually also Farid Bugadir, all filmmakers, a uh, filmmaker from Tunisia and they were saying that um, There are these films by African filmmakers, there are the narratives and their perspectives, but they are not getting to the audiences on, on the African continent in the respective countries. So it's a big problem of distribution and, and getting the films to the audience there. So, um, I mean, are your films watched in, in Cameroon? Is, do you have a connection to, to your audience? Or what, what is your experience in that? Well, connecting with the audiences has always been the biggest, the biggest challenge that we have faced. And um, there are some people who are attempting to put together platforms uh, for streaming to reach the younger audience. There is no more cinemas in Cameroon. I think there is one cinema but, or two, but they are not regular cinema. They are just screening halls by, put by a French, uh, a French group. Um, so the, the only space to, to show the students is to really try to show them through television or through um, internet. 
but the televisions most of the time are tele run a state run television who don't really care much about uh, cinema they can if they allow allocate a spot at one point to an African or local film for them is already such a big deal and so if culture and if cinema doesn't become a priority so that they can say okay every week we're going to have uh, almost every day an African film uh, we are not going to be able to really touch and reach the audience seriously because if there is not the political will mm. to to have that and and the, the relationship between cinema and the state has always been a very contentious mm. uh, because in the beginning in the 70s and, and 60s where well, after the independence uh, the the politician invited filmmakers to really bring come and help them really uh, see how to bring knowledge to the people but because the filmmakers were too critical by of what they were was happening suddenly the, the politicians started pushing them aside saying oh uh, we are also doing some good things so if you are the only thing that you are seeing are uh, just negative things, what is the point so the, the relationship started becoming contentious and the censorship went on and gradually cinema and filmmakers were put on the side and yet we needed cinema we needed images to not only for education but also for the entertainment but because these were pushed on the side they were just being bombarded by images coming from outside mm -hmm. and and of course for the politicians when it's images from outside are, are good for them because it doesn't bring people to think about what is happening around them sure and yeah all the, all the work i'm doing is we have managed to create a generation of africans who live in their own countries as if they were tourists they are not really grabbing the issues, things that are happening to try to transform the society, to make changes, except when they want to make that change, to make money. That's when you see very brilliant entrepreneur work, when they see a, a niche to make money, but when it's just transforming society and really make things better, well... It's not it's interesting. Not, uh, oh, okay. It's not interesting. So, the foreign films and the foreign images have had this have been used to really di disconnect the local people from their own problems, from their own questions, so that the exploitation and the aging of the whole continent could continue, and we will just be the spectator of that, actually. There's another question. Um, do you think that social media could make a change with that issue? Or is it getting worth with social media? <laughs> well, social, so social media could make, uh, could do a lot, but the thing is social media, people go on social media to have followers. And to have followers, you, they just go into a certain kind of uh, images, a certain kind of representation. It's going to be a cheese, cheesy comedy. They're going to be these short stories that always tell the same old, bad jokes, you have misogyny uh, stories, you have everything that people just don't, they don't push people to think, but it's just to have followers. How many followers are there? And so, so then they can make money. But of course, social media can be, can be put to use for that. That you also need for people to really have the will to do that. Because we are starting a platform to show films. And most of the platform, because people don't even have so much means, it has to be almost free, actually, so that people can watch. Because if you start asking people, and yet we need to ask people to contribute in a way, because you know, everything that comes for, to people for free, they don't really value it. So it's a big dilemma to, to find a way to the right balance between uh, what you, you can do to offer people and and how they can contribute into participating to the transformation of the society. 
Also any more questions? Ja, da ist noch eine. Ich möchte gerne auf Deutsch reden, wenn Sie das übersetzen könnten. Ja, klar. Genau. Ähm, ich habe keine Frage. Ich möchte nur sagen, ich bin Ihnen sehr, sehr, sehr dankbar für diesen Film. Ich bin vollkommen schockiert. Nochmal, es gibt Dinge, die weiß ich schon lange über Kolonialismus, über alles. Aber äh, Ihr Film hat das nochmal auf eine Art und Weise gezeigt, die nochmal ganz anders an mich rangekommen ist. Das möchte ja. ich einfach noch sagen, damit ja. das nicht so untergeht. Ich weiß ja. nicht, wem es noch so geht. Ich, ich, bin, ich bin entsetzt einmal mehr über das, was einfach weiße, schwarzen Menschen angetan haben und hm. weiterhin antun. Also, ja. Ja. also ähm, einmal kurz. Ach so, ja. Ja. Ähm, also, I'm just translating, it's, it's more of a comment than a question. And this lady over there, she just want to say um, a big thank you to you for this very important film. She was very impressed by it and, and also shocked. And uh, she has seen films or knows about colonialism and what had happened. And um, But this was now once again, yeah, an eye opener again and, and what what white people were doing to black people in the past and still are doing. So um, she's very moved. Oh, th thank you. Thank you. Things are, have changed, are not changing as fast as possible because the new strategy now is to take a few young black people who look good, who are beautiful and celebrate them and then leave the rest of the people in the same kind of place. And racism is not changing, moving, especially here in Europe. It's, uh, it's really, and in, and in the US also, it's just terrible because we haven't deconstructed the whole mental colonialism that is still so present in the minds of so many people. And that's a long, a long, a long battle. Thank you for the comment, anyway. Yes. Yes, I think you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, maybe one last question from the audience. We shortly have to come to an end, or I can put it. Okay. Um, yeah, on the one side, things are changing. On the other side, you are saying there's still so much to be done. So um, what what do you wish for, for the future and for for documentary filmmaking in Africa. Maybe you can tell us a bit what your projects are and and yeah, what, what your plans are for the future and what you wish for the to, to, yes. to more deconstruct this, um, these problems about racism and colonialism and so forth. So there's still so much to do. Yes, actually, uh, in, in 2015, when I started in Cameroon, the training program, uh, Patrimoine Heritage, and I've been training young people to make documentary and to make documentary on the issue of, of the heritage, whether it's material or immaterial. And doing this work, I realized that uh, the work cannot just be, I cannot just be doing it uh, like that, going from one place to the other. And gradually I realized that even when people are calling me to say, where can we see your films? Why? Such a shock to always have to go to Europe or to go to many places to find uh, images, to find my work. So I just felt it was important to have my films and to have the film that we do in one place. And that's why I started the project, The Lalom. Uh, this is going to be like the forge in the village where all the things will be uh, stored. That will also be a library, so, so that the young generation, the young people, will come and and emerge and learn about films from uh, other filmmakers. Because one of the big problems is that people don't see films; they don't have them. And people say, "Oh, but on internet you can see films," but internet doesn't work properly, so that you cannot be doing the streaming all the time. And they have been trying to make a streaming platform, and it's such a nightmare to show films. So maybe we'll go back to have a place where films can be shown and even take films to schools because we haven't even been thinking of having a TV in many schools 
uh, in Cameroon, we have schools, when you just mentioned the fact that we can have a, a TV to show images, people just say, what, a TV in school? It's almost like we are, we are in a place where people are not living with their own uh, time. And so the Lalong will be the center, the base where we are going to just irradiate in the population, show things there, uh, train young people. And why not be a beginning of something, a cultural space? And I'm trying to raise funds for that. Yeah. So Jean-Marie Tenot is, is building this house of documentary film. And I think it's it's very important task to, to educate young people about film, about documentary film, about the history of film. And um, yeah, we wish you good luck. And uh, we will, yeah, you can have the Google his project on the internet and maybe support if you want and um, yeah so you're not making films anymore you're making a house of documentary film <laughs> is that right <laughs> or you still have projects of course i still have projects there are so many projects because i wanted to have this parenthesis because to be making films just on my own is interesting but to have more people making things and give them opportunities that I didn't have is important. And of course, I have my own project. And by the end of this year, I, don't, I, would, I wouldn't say by the end of the film will be, but at least the project will be really formulated. And it's going to be the continuation of thinking about the world because this world needs to be repaired. And uh, I'm, I'm working in a way to contribute to that for things. Okay, so maybe we can invite you in the future again to DocFest. <laughs> ab 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 absolutely, absolutely. And actually, now we don't even have to move to, to travel to DocFest. You can continue to have exchanges yeah. from the village and from... <laughs> <laughs> we just have to make time and get internet. Yeah. So that's very yeah. good. Yeah, Jean-Marie, thank you again for, for making time for us in your transit. And um, thanks also to the audience to come along tonight. Um, we wish you safe travels. And... Um, Thank you, Dr. Minchin, for giving me this opportunity to talk to the audience and to show the film again. This is a film that was so dear to me. It was a, something like a gesture that I made 30 years ago. And uh, I didn't even expect that people would be seeing this film again 30 years later, but who knows? It's a monument <laughs> now. <laughs> It's there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank and you. Eh? All the best to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Maybe a round of applause. Bye. 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 Bye.